Hello and welcome to Cooking and Curry with the added sound effect of the washing machine which I just turned on, silly me. Um, ignore the hair, I've been on a rise, realities of a helmet. So today we are making a chickpea and sweet potato curry. Kyle is the cameraman and also the sous chef. So what you're going to need, this serves three to four people depending on how hungry your gullets are. You're going to need some chickpeas, you can have one or two, I'd say two tins of chickpeas. I've done mine from a bag. Basically, you have to soak them for 24 hours and cook them for an hour and a half. So, if you've not got time for that, whack a tin open, I'd say. But what we've got here is, Carl, do you want to pan in for the ingredients? Three sweet potatoes, garam masala, fenugreek, is that how you say it? Cumin, two onions, a lovely bit of coconut milk. I've gone for the light option because it's the only one they had. Tomato puree, chopped tomatoes. We're tripping on the tomatoes because we've got normal tomatoes as well. A little bit of coriander to spice it up. Spinach, absolutely love this bad boy. And then your three other essentials, your chilli, your garlic, and, no, that, that wasn't no, the no. garlic, that's the ginger. <laughs> the ginger and the garlic. So that is all your ingredients. So get those out and you're good to go. This recipe, I'm not a vegetarian, so I normally do have a chicken curry, but I like to have a vegetarian like two or three times a week, so yeah, this one's a veggie one. Now, the first thing you want to do is chop up your onions. If you've, if you've got your chickpeas ready, if you need to cook your chickpeas, do that first. That's the mistake I made. I wanted to eat half an hour earlier. Look at that, Kyle. You've your fingers off doing it like that. It's not the only thing I've chopped today. Yeah, let's just have a look at Kyle's leg. Pre warning, bit of blood coming up. Oh. Oh my goodness, look at that. Basically, a wall fell on his leg today while he was at work. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny, but it's not, it's not funny. Um, the question is, will he still be able to do PVP? Kyle, do you think you're all right? Yes. Okay. I'm just chopping the sweet potato, you're about to break your wrist off doing this. So I've chopped up the onion, well Kyle did one and I did the other. Chopped up the sweet potato, just chop it up roughly. You don't need to do it neat. Next thing you want is your curry pan. Now. You can put oil in and fry your onions in oil, but if you want to be more healthy, whack a little bit of water in and cook just the same. So you do what you want to do. Today, I'm doing that. Not that it's not, it's you know, it's actually healthy to use oil as well, so don't get any ideas, but yeah, I'm just using water today. So what we're going to do is scrape the onions into the pan. Oh yeah, in a minute. Don't get them everywhere because then you've got a mess to clean up and I've cleaned the kitchen this afternoon. Next thing, what you want to do with your onions, you want to mix with a spacing. So, we've got garam masala. I'm not measuring, I'm just, I'm just putting in. So I want the most garam masala, so that's going in the most. Whack that in. Then, next most, cumin. Oh yeah, a little bit of cumin. Get that in. That's the second biggest one, so a little bit less than what I just put in. And then, a little bit of fenugreek. Or as you like to call it, fenugreek. Fenugreek? I don't really know. Anyway, it's gone in. I look like a blooming, I look like I've been dragged through a bush backwards. Right, then, get your mixer and just let it sizzle. Mix it around, make sure it doesn't burn to the bottom of the pan. You know, just mix it around really. So we can cut there and go to the next bit. So the onion is sizzling and we're mixing it around. Oh yeah. Sizzling, the next thing that's going in the pan is the garlic and the ginger. Now, a little trick for ginger, the best bit is the bit under the skin, I've been told. So instead of chopping away the good bit, use a little teaspoon now this one might not be very bright, or it is bright, and you just scrape away the skin like that. And then you've got the goodness underneath, but I'm not going to video all of this because it's going to take me a little while. If you can't be bothered, you can buy like easy squeezy garlic, or you know, I mean ginger, but I like to use the fresh stuff. Right, the onion's been sizzling for 10 minutes and Kyle is getting that garlic in there. What I love about this recipe is once you've got all the ingredients prepped, literally you just chuck everything in the pan. Onions, garlic and ginger going first, sizzle it around for about 10-15 minutes and then, as you'll see in a second, everything else just wax in one at a time. Kylie, you enjoying that? I love squeezing the garlic to be fair. Do you? Yeah, gets me angry out. Grating in the ginger. Right, basically just grate this straight in. Literally setting on the grate so you don't want big chunks of it. Just grate to your heart's content. But I have slightly burnt the onions to the bottom of the pan, so sorry about that Kyle. It'll be alright. Yeah, okay. Lovely side taste of burn. <laughs> but yeah, basically add in your garlic, your ginger, your onions, keep mixing. If the water runs out, just add a little bit more water in the pan. And yeah, 
that's the first bit being then done. Okay, let's not drop these on the floor. Now that's been sizzling for a good little while, we're adding in the sweet potato. My favourite, I love a good sweet potato. And then, place this down gently. We're going to add in the chopped tomatoes. So they make a nice sauce, we'll start brewing. No tinnoco required. No tinnoco required today, yeah. Normally, I have to, when I buy the cheap one, you have to use a tin opener, but I went a bit more deluxe today. It's still now be special, but the uh, top of the range album, so living the high life. And then we're mixy mixing. Carl, let's get a close up of this couple. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yummy, yummy. So, my chickpeas are finally finished cooking, so I'm going to add them into the bowl, pour them in, and mix it up. Carl's got bored, so he's gone and sat in there with his beer. Don't blame him, to be fair, he has been at work all day. Yummy, yummy. Round we go, mixy mix. Now, next thing I'm going to add in is the tomatoes. I'm going to chop them up next and put them in. I've just whacked in the tomatoes and the chilli as well. Now with the chilli, you can either put the whole chilli in if you're a spice demon. If you don't like it too spicy, just, you know, don't put the middle and the seeds in because that's the spicy bit. So, yeah, let's mix this bad boy up. The smell is unreal. It's really, really nice. Oh, and I better put some rice on in a minute because Kyle wants some rice with his. With this, you can have it with rice, you can have it with naan bread. You can just have it on its own with salad, whatever you fancy. It's been sizzling for about 15 minutes and I've just whipped out the paprika. And I'm just going to put a little hint of that in, sprinkling it in, in it goes, just to add a little bit of extra taste. Now the next thing that's going in the pan is the spinach. I whacked in the whole bag of spinach because spinach does tend to boil down into literally nothing. So yeah, you need a lot of it. So the whole bag's gone in. Just be careful when you put it in. You might have to put it in in bits because there is a lot and you do have a risk of it falling out the pan, which just happened to me. So yeah, we're mixing this round. And like I say, we're going to leave this to simmer just about five minutes, spinach doesn't take very long to cook. And then it's nearly ready. So the next thing going in is, I'm gonna try to spook this very full, the coconut milk. Now, I've opened it with my tin opener. Always give it a good shake before you open it, otherwise it's a bit separated. Now, you don't want the whole thing, so that's quite a lot. So I'm just gonna put like maybe just about half in, give it a mix and see what it looks like. But I love coconut milk, it's such a nice flavour and now is where it gets really nice and salty. Blooming neck, I'm sorry about the background noise, the washing machine, look what's happening to it. Blooming neck sounds like it's taking off. Oh look at this yumminess, it's nearly ready now. Saucy and good. So everything's in and then you just leave it and simmer it for about five minutes. And the final thing to add in is your coriander. Now, a little tip for your coriander because you don't. I don't put a whole pack of coriander in too much so if you've got too much, chop it up, put it into ice cube things, and then put it in the freezer. Then next time you want some coriander, you've got little ice cubes ready. You just pop it straight in. Great tip, less waste, I say. But yeah, so I'm going to put the coriander in, and then it'll be ready to serve. And the final thing going in is my chopped coriander. And then we're literally just going to mix it around for a few minutes and serve. I am ready for this, and let me tell you one thing, it smells D to the E vine. And voila, dinner is served. Carl's got so much it's fallen off his plate and he's also slapped on a piece of bread. Verdict? Very well. I've been working on today. Out of 10? 9.2. Where's the extra 0.8 coming from? Mm. Proper non bread. <laughs> now I've gone for a side of lettuce and cucumber with mine because that's just what I like. Now let's do the taste verdict. Mm. I think my taste buds just died and went to heaven. And with that, I'm saying goodbye. Thanks for watching. TT to the FN. I will put the proper recipe and the ingredients in the description because I know I'm not very easy to follow along. Sorry about that. Bye. Carl, do you want to say bye? Bye. <laughs>